Hi, pre -count students. This is your video of Unit 2, Lesson 1. Um, I'm going to talk you through the answer key. I had made a video of my lesson in class, but for some reason it, we couldn't get it to upload. Tech department helped me. It didn't work. So I'm just going to do this answer key and talk you through that instead. What you might want to do for this as much as you can is to pause and try questions on your own, like this warm-up. You could pause and try this on your own. Um, for each question, I'm going to show you the answer key. You're going to have the answer already, so you might want to pause, try to think it through on your own, and check your answer. But And then if you didn't get it or you don't understand, then you can come back and listen to the video. So the warm-up question number one. It says eight pieces of paper are numbered one through eight and placed in a box. One piece of paper is drawn from the box, its number is written down, and the piece of paper is replaced in the box. A second piece of paper is drawn from the box, its number is written down, and finally, we're adding those two numbers together. How many different ways can a sum of 12 be obtained? So in order to get a sum of 12 and you have eight numbers, one through eight, well, you could get a four and an eight. So choose the four first, replace it, then get an eight. You could choose the five first, replace it, then get a seven. Choose a six first, replace it, and get the same six again. Choose a seven first, replace it, then get a five, eight first, and then get a four. So these are the sums of 12. There's five different ways it could happen. So that's why my answer is five. The difference between warm-up question number one and warm-up question number two is warm-up question number two has the same scenario, eight pieces of paper numbered one through eight in the box, except this time you're not going to replace that first piece of paper you pick. So when you pick a four, you don't replace the four, but you could still pick an eight because the eight's still in there. When you pick a five, you could then pick a seven second, but you can no longer get the six six combination because you're not replacing the six and there are not two sixes in the box. So you would only have four ways of getting a sum of 12 for this example number two. All right, moving on to the lesson. So our lesson is mainly focusing on the fundamental counting principles, and then eventually we will learn about permutations and combinations and learn their formula. Um, the fundamental counting principle is for counting problems that involve multiple stages. And I believe if you were here at our school and took Algebra 2 Trig, you talked about the fundamental counting principle. You have different stages or different choices for each stage, and then you would multiply those choices together because you're going to have something from the first stage and, and when we say the word and, we mean multiplication, and something in the second stage and something in the third stage. So here is an example where you would use the fundamental counting principle. Example number one. License plates in Singapore start with three letters, followed by four numbers, and end with a letter. How many different license plates are possible? Well, there's 26 letters in the alphabet. There are 10 single digit numbers, zero. Remember, zero counts. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So zero through nine is 10 digits. And then there are 26 letters in the alphabet. So we have 26 letters. We didn't say they couldn't repeat, which means they could possibly repeat. So it's 26 to the fourth power, because we have this letter at the end, and then 10 to the fourth power. So that's why license plates and telephone numbers are made with so many um, digits, or sorry, so many, yeah, I guess placeholders here because we need to have a lot of telephone numbers that exist in the world or in the country. So you have an eight digit telephone number, an eight digit or eight um, place value for your driver's license or license plate number. So if you're doing the fundamental counting principle and we suddenly put restrictions on the scenario, then you need to always deal with the restrictions first. So example two is an example where we have restrictions. So it says determine the number of four different four letter arrangements that can be formed using only the letters in the word English. So the letters in the word English um, are all different. And we're only going to use these letters however many times they appear. So you don't have any repeating letters here. There are no restrictions. So we have seven letters to choose from. There's seven letters in this word English. And we're only making a four letter arrangement. So there's no restrictions here. So we just do seven times six times five times four, which would total 840. Letter B has our first restriction. The first letter must be an E. If that first letter must be an E, then we know we have only one choice because there's only one E in the word English and then that removed one of the seven letters so there's only six left to choose from then five and then four. 
Okay, part C, no letters are repeated and the first and last letters must be vowels. Well, we look at the word English, E and I are the vowels, so there are two vowels and the first and the last letter must be a vowel. We have two choices for the first vowel and the first letter. Now that we've chosen one, we only have one choice for the vowel here. These are my two restrictions. I removed the two vowels. I only have five letters to choose from. So there's five consonants here, the four consonants is here. So my total is 40. For example, 2D, it says no letters are repeated and the arrangement must contain a G. So G could be in the first position or every time you say the word or you put an addition sign so if we're saying and we need the first letter and the second letter and the third letter and the fourth letter then you do multiplication signs for the word and but the word or means addition so g could be in the first position or g could be in the second position or g could be the third letter of the word or g could be the fourth letter of the word so there are four different ways that g could be arranged so it's four times whatever your answer was, six times five times four, which is 120, so it's 480 different ways that the arrangement could contain the letter G. Now really what these were, were they were some form of permutation. And so a permutation is when the order matters. So the order of whatever it is you are writing as letters or you're choosing things, it's when the order matters. So you can see here, if we had the letters ABC, if we rearrange them to CBA, those are two different outcomes. And so the order of the letters A, B, and C matter. Just like this example three right here. If you have a code, it says an internet site access code consists of three digits. Joe cannot remember the access code, but he knows that it contains the digits three, five, and seven. If the digits must be entered in the correct order, list all of the possible ways that Joe could get, or how, if he had to guess and he wasn't sure, how many different times would he have to try it before he got the right one? So here it's just asking you to list all those possible orders. Well, you know there's three numbers, so it's going to be three times two times one. So there's only six codes he has to figure out. So the first one is 357, or switch these last two to 375, or 537, and then 573. 735, 753. These are all six different codes, so it's a permutation because the order in which you put those numbers matters. We could also rewrite this right here as a permutation. It's he had three numbers, he's choosing three of them, so it's n, p, n, which is the same as just three factorial. Um, so this was three factorial, which was six codes. If these weren't the same number and you just had three choose two or seven choose four, which is kind of what we did up here, this was a seven p three scenario, or sorry, seven p four scenario then you would use this formula. So it's seven factorial divided by seven minus three factorial, and you would have um, four letters there, or seven times six times five times four, sorry. All right, moving on with more words here. It says, how many permutations are there for the letters in the word tampanese? Well, you, first you need to count the letters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Also, we notice that all the letters in tampanese are different. There isn't a single repeating letter there. There are eight letters. We have eight spots. So that's just eight factorial. Or you could say it's eight P8, which is the same as eight factorial. You have eight letters. You're choosing all eight of them. The order does matter, so it's eight factorial. For example, five, letter A, we're determining the amount of arrangements for two letters from the word golden. Well, golden has six letters. They're all different from one another. So it's either six P2, or it's just gonna be six times five, which is 30, right? Six P2, according to this formula up here, is six factorial divided by four factorial. So we get 30. Example 5B, three letters from the word chapters. All these letters are different. There are eight letters, so it's eight, P3, which ends up being 8 factorial, or sorry, 8 times 6 times 8 times 7 times 6. Um, four letters from the word wealthy, so that's going to be, there's seven letters in wealthy. They're all different from one another, so it's 7P4. So we just get 7 times 6 times 5 times 4, 
and that is 840. Now, again, I've been emphasizing that all of these words have different letters in their word. What if the word has the same letter? What if we have repeating letters in one of the words, like Mississippi? Well, we're going to do a little experiment to see what happens. If we took, took the word rose and I asked you how many different ways you could arrange those four letters, well, you should know there are four different letters, so that would be four times three times two times one, so there should be 24 different ways we could write the four letters of the word rose. Here they all are, those 24 different ways. There are six ways that start with an R, six ways that start with an O, six ways that start with an S, six ways that start with an E. Now, what if I change this letter E to the letter S? So we have two S's. Does it matter if the first, third S and the fourth S switch positions? No, we have no idea that they switch possess, positions because it's the same word, Ross. So therefore, we have to cancel out this repeating R-O-S-S. -S. So we have some repeaters through here that we need to cancel. So in the end, we only have 12 permutations. Well, we chose two letters, so we took the original total 24 and divided by 2 to get 12 permutations. But if you replace the O with an S, we have a whole bunch more repeating four-letter words. And so we only end up with four scenarios. So some people think, oh, there were two letters repeating. I'm just going to divide by the number 2 and get 12. If there's three letters repeating. I just divide by the number 3 and get the answer, but that's not true. We don't actually divide by just the number of the letters repeating. You take the number of the letters repeating, there's three letters that are repeating, and you divide by that number three factorial. So we divide by six to get four. So here there's two letters repeating. We're actually dividing by two factorial, which is just two. If there's three letters repeating, we actually divide by three factorial, which is six, to get an answer of four. So continuing that pattern, however many letters there are total goes in the numerator, that number factorial, and you divide by each individual repeater in the denominator and how many times it repeats factorial. So I'll explain that in example six below. So example six below, we have the word fleece. Fleece is six letters. We put six factorial in the numerator because it's six letters altogether. The letter E repeats itself three times, so that is one letter that repeats three times, so we divide by three factorial. So the word fleece can be rewritten 120 different ways. With the word Mississippi, we have 11 letters in the word Mississippi. There are four S's. There are four I's and there are two P's. So we have four S's, we divide by four factorial. There are four I's, you divide by four factorial. There are two P's, you divide by two factorial. So this, you could punch that into your calculator or multiply it all out, or you could just leave it in this factorial notation. All right, so we've learned about permutations, now we need to learn about combinations. A combination is when the order does not matter. So if you think about playing poker or playing euchre or playing big two, you get a card, a handful of cards. When you get those five cards in your hand, does it matter if the dealer gave you the eight of hearts first or the eight of hearts last or the eight of clubs first, second or the eight of clubs fourth or the two of hearts third or the two of hearts first? It doesn't matter because you're still going to have those five cards in your hand to play the game. So the order in which the dealer dealt them to you does not matter in many card games. So this is then a combination, again, because the order doesn't matter. So I'm going to have to pause here and continue this in a new video. Um, we'll talk about combinations. You might want to look through it and maybe try some of this on your own or just wait till the next video and watch that to figure out what combinations are. Talk to you soon.